what's the uh, excitement level? Had a great practice last night. Kids are excited. You can just tell. We had some great weather. We had cloud coverage, and you know it was only 95 degrees, so it felt wonderful out there. Greg. Jeff, what are the uh, challenges of preparing for Kennesaw's uh, option offense and some of the elements you'll see in that sense? Yeah, that's always tough. Man, you mix in first game. And I'm sure you guys have done your own research on them, but what we've learned, you know, is really smart by Coach Bohan. He's been there 10 years, so and the staff's been there a long time with him as well. A uh, really proud program. Um you like you watch their games. They've got a nice stadium. Their crowd shows up. They're, you can tell they're used to winning. And you might say, well, they stepped back last year, but they knew they were going to FBS. And I thought he did something that was very wise. Um, they knew they couldn't win a championship. So they redshirted 75% of their roster. So I don't know how they pulled that off. I guess they kind of rotated four games at a time. I don't know how you could redshirt 75% of your roster uh, and still function like they did and play a Sam Houston team who came to FBS and played all their opponents, you know, really tough. Uh, and that was a three-point game. So they're very well coached. They're a lot better than I want them to be. And um, they'll they'll be lined up correctly, be sound, and give us fits, especially in the option game, which is always tough uh, to, to prepare for. When, like you mentioned, they've done that with the roster and kept so many guys in reserve, does that change how you use last year's film or how you go about preparing for them from that standpoint to learn what those guys are capable of? Uh, yeah, it's tough, that first game. I mean, you're just not quite sure what you're getting exactly and who knows what changes they made or, you know, what that looks going to look like come Saturday. That's why the first games are – there's a lot of upsets and – a lot of shocking stuff. And as the season progresses, stuff calms down a little bit because you start to get video and you can, you know, assess the other team's strengths and weaknesses and what their tendencies are. But we're both coming here pretty blind right now. Is there anything about preparing for Army's option that translates to this game prep or is a triple option just a totally different thing from the way these guys operate? Um, there's some similarities. Uh, there are there are some similarities, but uh, – but some differences too. Each one has their own nuances, but yeah, somebody still got to play the dive. Somebody still got to play the quarterback. Somebody still got to play the pitch. And you know, in modern offense, I mean, zone read uh, has become at least where you get some type of option look, especially if you were to motion somebody and have a pitch man out there. Um, but it's not the same. They're just more committed to it than. Uh, even we have done that a little bit in our career here, but we don't major in it like these guys do. Stevens? Jeff, you guys this year opening at home, uh, the past couple of years have been road games this week. So what are your kind of thoughts on finally getting a home game to start the season as opposed to starting out on the road? Yeah, well, we're, we're very comfortable in the Alamo Dome, as our record shows. So um, we're excited to start off at the house and, um, and it's just a it's just a great time of year. It's no more practice. You finally get to go play, and uh, we're excited. Our fans have been so good to us since we've been here, from the spirit walk to the way they tailgate, just atmosphere in the game. Uh, whether it's twenty five thousand to you know forty five thousand, it all sounds the same to us because we're it's deafening at twenty five thousand. So it forty five thousand just makes it more deafening. Greg. Jeff, do you expect to rotate on the offensive line quite a bit, or do you head into the opener with a group of five that you feel good about there? No, we'll rotate uh, like we've always done. I mean, it's just hard that very first game. Um, you'll see a lot of different faces out there. Uh, Corey Godin, in particular, I want to ask about. He seems kind of primed to step into a starting role that he had last year, and he was voted a single-digit guy. But we haven't talked about him much. Uh, through fall camp. Just one sort of the biggest things that stand out about him. Just like you said, not only have we not talked about him very much, he doesn't talk at all. I mean, like Corey is a man of very, very few words. Uh, pretty much all I get out of him every morning is, uh, hey, boss man, that's all I ever get. So uh, great human, uh, toughest, one of, the, one of the toughest humans I've ever coached, one of the strongest humans. He's a large, large man. And, um, uh, He'll, he'll have another great year for us. 
How does somebody become a, a leader and a single digit guy when they say so little? Um, we're all scared to death of him. He might squash us if we don't vote for him. JJ. Jeff, how many guys do you think you'll play in week one? Oh, great question there, JJ. Stump, stumping the stumper. Um, you know, JJ, I don't know. I got to go. I'll put the pencil to that. I would guess uh, I'd be shocked if we don't have 70 to 80 players play in the game. Um, that might be a little high, um, but we, 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 especially early in the year, we try to get guys out there, uh, get some real evaluations on them. And, um, I'd say, yeah, you know, because we always play uh, two deep for sure everywhere on defense and three deep in the D-line, so you're already around 28 on defense. Uh, you'll be somewhere around, you know, 20 to 25 on offense, so you're already over 50. And then you throw specialists out there, another 20, you know, different guys on special teams. I'd say 75 would be a, a close guesstimate. What's your message to the team this week? No different than it is every week. I mean, today they need to be the very best in class. I mean, their first day of class today, let's all show up. Let's sit towards the front. Let's get our notes out. Let's, let's smile. Let's get to know our teacher. Let's let's win today. And I know y'all get very bored with all my answers, but we got to win today. If we keep stacking days, we'll be fine Saturday. If we don't stack good days, uh, it'll show Saturday. Steven. Coach, as you come into this first week of the season, how do you look at the team health-wise? Um, we've got we've got some spots. You know, we've got some guys that will not be out there. Uh, we've got some guys that are banged up a little bit. Uh, we'll see how the week goes uh, to see if we can get some of those guys back. If if not, we'll play with the guys we got. Greg. Jeff, what's Kamar Missouri showed you in his first fall camp here? What's stood out about him? Uh, he's earned the opportunity uh, to compete for that job, and him and Buffalo have, have gone at it, and uh, he'll play at left tackle, uh, as will Buffalo, and we'll keep assessing all those spots. I mean, we, we're going to keep competing and and see who goes up there and, 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 and finally, you know, stamps it, and it's theirs. But we're, we're going to keep rotating those guys and, and keep competing right now. On the other side, it seems like Jalen Garth, you know, just looking back through his career, he hasn't been able to play a ton of offensive line snaps at the college level and even going back to some injuries late in his high school career. How do you sort of assess his readiness to step into game situations this weekend? He's had a good camp. He had a good spring. had a good summer. Um, so he's had a, a little bit of injury earlier, but he's he's been healthy for a while now. And, uh, again, he's earned the opportunity to compete for that job. Um, Makai, I uh, just don't know if he's going to be ready or not. So um, we'll we'll have some other guys out there. You know, Meach will be out there as well. And we could also put Big Purr, which is DeAndre Marshall, out there. Uh, but he's earned the right to to go out there and, and start the game off. And and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how good his conditioning is and see how many snaps he can play Saturday. I think this is the second time you mentioned that. You guys called DeAndre Big Purr. Is there a reason for that? Big Per, yeah, uh, you know he's six six, probably three something, and you know he he has a cat, so he loves his cat, so he's Big Per. I guess I guess that makes sense. I wanted to uh, I wanted to ask you about the running back situation as well. Is there anything that you've seen in the preseason that's helped you determine how you want to split carries or how many guys we should expect to see involved so I come game time? Yeah, pray for Julian Griffin to have to keep that room happy. There's a lot of really good ones in that room. Uh, we should probably be running uh, the wishbone ourselves. Do you expect that it'll be kind of the three that we would expect with the, with Rocco Griffin and, and Kavorian and Robert Henry, or do you think some of the other guys will also have a chance to shine at the times this year? No, there'll be other guys out there as well. I also wanted to ask you about one of the things uh, Donya Taylor told us was that when he first uh, got to UTSA, uh, he was kind of a guy coming from a small school who's used to always being the best player here. I imagine you run into that a lot with, with small school guys. How do you help guys adjust to a higher level of competition and not being the number one player on the team as they were in their high school careers? 
that's not just small school guys. That's all guys. I mean, you got to understand those guys since kindergarten, when we all went out to the playground and we were going to pick the kickball team, uh, those guys were always picked first, you know, and me and JJ were down there towards the bottom of the order. So our self-confidence is not near like their self-confidence is. So you can imagine <clears throat> you have 120 of all first round kickball stars on your team. And then you get here and you've got the best of the best. Well, I can't put 120 kickball players out there, right? So I can only put a few. And uh, it's very humbling on all of them. It's just it's, it's the life of college. And when they go the next – there's going to be 1,200 NFL players cut today. Hey, hear me, 1,200. <laughs> I mean, that's that's pretty humbling. That means all the best kickball kickers in the world, 1,200 of them are not going to be on a team today. And uh, that's the same level of college. It's just humbling. And um, it's really good for them. You find out what kind of human you are. Can you can you fight through the mental adversity, the mental toughness of all that? And uh, they all do. It's just getting them there. You know, it's just getting them there is always tough. Is there a message or something you tell them to help brace them for that, or do they just kind of have to live it? Just so many examples, right? I mean, you watch – we show a ton of video here of our players, and all those guys used to be in normal numbers – and usually, by the time they get out of here, they're in single digits. And uh, not all of them can, because you obviously don't have that many numbers. But there's a lot of great stories of guys that were in you know, double digits, and they ride out of here in a single because they've matured and they bought into the culture. JJ? Jeff, I think you guys are 24 or 25-point favorites. Do you talk to your team about trying to avoid a, an upset? Because... You see a lot of that in week one. I mean, we saw some of that in week zero. Yeah, it's a really good point. JJ's on fire this morning. Uh, you know, Nevada was a 28-point favorite, and uh, SMU had to score on their very last drive to win that game, and Nevada had to lead uh, most of the game. So uh, there's always those examples you're showing your players. Um, and, again, you know, I'll repeat about Kennesaw. It's very deceptive. Uh, if we would have redshirted 75% of our roster last year, what would our record be? Uh, I don't think we would have a very good record either. And um, they're going to be better than y'all want them to be. And when, when, when they come out there and play, they're, they're very well coached. They're fundamentally sound. Their kids compete at a high level. They've been winning for a long time. And um, I'm shocked that he did such a great job, him being Coach Bahannon. Uh, to have that many guys red shirt and be okay with it. That shows you the culture he has established in his own program. Any other questions for Coach Trailer this morning? All right. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate y'all. God bless. Birds up. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff.